Most people have heard of software, but have you ever wondered what firmware is? If yes, let's break it down and see why firmware and software are two separate things. Let us discuss an analogy. Suppose we have two different models of cars at our disposal, car A and car B. These cars here represent hardware. Now, let us get a handsome car driver to drive these machines. Consider the car driver as a software. A trained driver can operate different cars, aka hardware, whether it's a sedan, SUV or truck, as long as they know how to drive. Firmware, on the other hand, is like the car's built-in systems, like the engine control unit and dashboard electronics. You can't just take the ECU from a Toyota and put it into a Tesla. It will never work. So, while software is flexible and can switch between different hardwares, like a driver changing cars, firmware is tightly bound to its specific hardware, like a car's internal systems. Now, let's talk about real-world examples. Well, examples of software can be easily seen in your smartphone apps like Zomato, Swiggy, YouTube, Uber, Book My Show, WhatsApp. The list goes on and on. You install, update, or uninstall them at your will. Examples of firmware are your earpods code with which you vibe to your favorite music, your smartwatch code system, or even your washing machine's embedded program. Mind you, mess with it too much and you might be hand washing your clothes forever. Let's make the difference clearer. I've opened VS Code on my Windows laptop and the processor here is x64 architecture. We will write a hello world code in VS Code and would be using MinGW toolchain with GCC compiler. If we run this same code on any other Windows, Mac or Linux based device using either MSVS or GCC compiler, it works fine, right? Next up, we will open up stm 32 cube ID and hover to a basic LED example code for our stm 32 F4 based chip. After successfully building it, we will upload the hex file to our stm 32 board using stlink v2 programmer. The LED starts blinking. We also have a NRF Pi2840 dongle with us, which already has the blinking LED code running. Let us try to change it by uploading the same hex file from our previous STM32 code. On opening NRF Connect for desktop app and then entering bootloader mode on the dongle, we try to select the hex file from stm32 folder. Well, it is not parsing. Let me select any hex file from my previous examples of the dongle. Well, this parses. Strange, right? If you are new to these boards, watch our getting started video of these chips to start with. Let's now summarize what we observed. We wrote a simple C program compile it using GCC compiler and when you run it on different system, it works fine. Now, then we wrote an LED link program for STM32, flashed it and it ran as well. We tried uploading the same hex file to a dongle and it failed. Why? Well, laptop devices have general purpose operating system which handles memory and peripherals dynamically while embedded systems they don't have OS-like features, that is why memory and peripherals must be explicitly configured. Embedded systems, they don't have any OS to manage memory, so the program must define everything. In case of our stm 32 based chip, flash memory starts at 0 x 0 8 0 0 0 0 0 0. SRAM starts at 0 x 2 and then 7 times 0. While in case of NRF52840, flash starts at 0 hex 8 times 0 and SRAM memory address is I guess the same. What happens if we use the wrong memory map? Well, the microcontroller won't know where to execute code. 
leading to probable issues. Relate this to a postal address. I mean, if I deliver your package to a wrong address, you would probably complain. The general purpose operating system abstracts hardware and hence there is no need to configure peripherals manually while in embedded systems peripherals are memory mapped. Want to turn on an LED? You must manually mention the GPIO register like we did in the STM32 code. Let us talk about another example. Think about food delivery apps like Zomato or Swiggy that track delivery riders in real time. The smartphone that the rider carries has a GPS chipset that receives satellite signals. The firmware drivers in the phone are responsible for interpreting these signals and translating raw satellite signals into usable coordinates such as latitude and longitude. The app aka software accesses GPS data via Android or iOS APIs. It uses this processed data to track the rider's location and update ETA for that meal you are longing for. So, the GPS module relies on its firmware drivers to function properly within the smartphone. The food delivery app, however, remains software using the data provided by the OS and the firmware drivers for live tracking. And just like a typical software, the app is free to be installed or uninstalled across various devices. So, in short, software is flexible and can change often. Firmware is like your device's soul essential but not meant to be frequently messed with hope that clears things up if you enjoyed this breakdown hit that like button subscribe for more tech wisdom and let me know in the comments have you ever bricked a device with a bad firmware update <laughs> don't worry you're not alone